Hello, everybody. This is our first Friday family reading, and I have chosen Later Gator by Lawrence Yep. This was one of the Book Reading Challenges books many years ago when my kids were in it, and it was just a really fun book, so I hope you enjoy it. Chapter One. The alligator was the mother's fault. She told me to buy something special. Mother, as usual, blames me. She says that I've got more imagination than brains. It's not my little brother's problem. Last Christmas, I gave him a pair of socks. Bobby was too dumb to understand the insult. Instead of getting mad, he said to me, they're neato and just what I wanted. Yeah, sure, I thought to myself. Bobby had to put on his new socks right away and wriggle his toes at me. They're very warm and comfortable. Thank you, he said. Do you see what I mean? Bobby's a walking Hallmark card. Mother had understood, though. So this year on Friday, the day before Bobby's eighth birthday, she took me aside. Why can't you get along with your little brother? What has he ever done to you? Nothing, I confessed. That was the trouble. What kind of little brother doesn't bug his big brother? Bobby was not normal. Mother clicked her tongue. Everybody else likes your brother. He's sweet. Bobby's a regular mint chocolate bar, all right, I said, and thought to myself, and I, am, and I am a raisin cookie. Then why haven't you ever bought him something special, Mother demanded. She would make a good prosecutor. You always said it's the spirit that counts, I grumbled. Mother frowned. Only a mean person buys a cheap pair of white cotton socks. He liked the baseball. Mother folded her hands in front of her which you then used and lost. The Christmas before I got him comic books, I pointed out, which he couldn't read. I read them to him, I said. Mother just looked at me until I admitted, sometimes. You treat him like he's an enemy. Don't you love your brother? Mother asked. Of course I do, I lied. But really, how can I love a little angel who makes me feel mean and selfish and bad? Then show your love, Mother said. Get something Bobby wants. I tried to weasel out of it. I can't afford the official Willie Mays baseball glove. No, I mean something he wants even more. I've talked it over with your father, and he's agreed that Bobby to have a pet, Mother said. She went to a cabinet and took out a big paper bag. From the bag, she slid out a kidney-shaped plastic tray, a wall of transparent plastic some three inches high ran around the edge of the tray. Part of the bottom rose up into an island in the center and a plastic palm tree grew from the island's middle. I got the idea when he was watching a nature show on TV. He likes animals, Mother said. He always wants to go to the zoo or the Academy of Sciences. The Academy was in Golden Gate Park and had an aquarium, a hall with stuffed animals and a reptile section. It wasn't fair, I told myself. I figured he watched educational shows to please our parents and to make me look bad. I'll take the three stooges, stooges over a nature show anytime. Then I saw an ad in the newspaper. Mother said, and I bought this. It's a turtle home. You go down to the department store and they've got turtles on sale. You can buy him a pet. Feeling miserable but caught, I promised. For the rest of the week, I put it off. There was no fun in giving Bobby something he wanted. Instead, I just hung around the apartment and moped. On the morning of his birthday, he was up bright and early and jumping around, pretending to catch fly balls over the shoulder like Willie Mays. He'd made so much noise that I had to get up early too, even though it was Saturday. Mother served his favorite breakfast. We each had a scrambled egg with rice and slices of Chinese sausage. The problem was that Mother served it every morning. It was typical of Bobby to play up to mother that way. I would have asked for scrambled eggs, bacon, and toast. When father asked Bobby what he wanted to do on his birthday, Bobby volunteered to help him in the fish shop. Any normal kid would have asked for money for a movie. For, for him and for his older brother. Boy, he really drove me crazy. After father and Bobby left work, mother stood over me. Well, did you buy Bobby's pet? She asked. I squirmed on my chair. I didn't want to get it too soon. If Bobby found it, it ruined the surprise. I thought so, 
Mother handed me a folded up piece of paper. I cut out the ad from the newspaper so you would know where to go. After you wash the dishes, go down and buy Bobby's pet. That's Bobby's chore today, I whined. It's his birthday, Mother said. I have to buy tonight's dinner. When I come home, I want to find that turtle waiting for me. You can leave it in our bedroom until we give out the presents. She wasn't going to leave me any way to escape. If you need money, go down to the garbage cans. I saw lots of empty soda bottles. Chapter two. After mother left, I heaved a big sigh. Going into the kitchen, I turned to for music and began washing the dishes. As I was finishing up, I saw the newspaper out on the table. It was for a department store in the Stonestown Mall where mother worked. It'd take me most of the morning just to get out there. Above the address was a big drawing of a boy and girl gazing happily at a turtle. It was grinning back from a plastic bowl like the one mother had bought. In big type, the ad announced the turtles were on sale for 50 cents. Then I saw the small print, baby alligators on sale. And like an omen, the radio began playing a funny song from the past. See you later, alligator, the radio sang. After a while, crocodile. If there had been a light bulb over my head, it would have suddenly shone as bright as the sun. Carefully, I reviewed my mother's words. As far as I can remember, she'd said to buy Bobby a pet. I chuckled. Poor mother. She thought she'd trap me, but she had given me a loophole. A plan began to build in my mind. First, though, I called up the department store having a sale. When I got the operator, I asked her, I'd like to buy my brother something special from your pet department. If he doesn't like it, can I return it? You can return anything within 72 hours after the sale, she added. But the pet has to be alive. It won't be here long enough to die, I laughed and hung up. I imagined what would happen tonight when Bobby opened his present. He'd probably run shrieking from the room. In my mind, I played out many marvelous scenes, ranging from a horrified Bobby to an outraged one. In any case, I would have to return it and get my money back. At the same time, Mother would learn her lesson, too. It was the perfect gift. I could keep my promise to Mother because it'd be nature stuff as well as something special. I could keep my promise to myself because it would be weird enough. The only trouble was the price. I went to my bureau drawer and counted the change in the old cup. Then I went to my secret treasure vault, which was a copy of Tom Swift, Jr., between pages 42 and 43, I kept a lycee from our Uncle Tim and Aunt Norma. A lycee is a small red envelope. I slipped out the little bright red envelope and took out the money folded in there. I searched for the other envelope from Uncle Curtis and Aunt Ethel. Too late, I realized. I'd spent it on snacks last month when I had seen a movie. Still, I had other reserves. Getting down on all fours, I hunted under my bed and found some spare change. In the kitchen, I found some empty soda bottles. Then I went to the garbage cans. More empty soda bottles were there, just as Mama had said. With all the returns, I had just enough money to get Bobby his special surprise. I could hardly wait. At this point, I ought to explain my philosophy of life. Older brothers are put on this earth to help prepare younger brothers for reality. Parents pick on the first child. I think they call it building character. However, they spend so much energy building the first child's character that they're worn out by the time the second one comes along. So the first child has to take up the slack or the second child won't have any character at all. In fact, an older brother owes it to his little brother to pick on him. We do it out of love because we want our little brothers to grow up to be more than just jellyfish. It took a table, cable car and two buses to get out to the Stonestown shopping mall. It had been sunny in Chinatown but in that neighborhood, a cloud hid the sun. The store itself was a three-story brick box occupying one corner of the mall. By the escalator was a directory to the store. I had to go up three flights to the very top where there was a tremendous racket. I just followed the sound of barking to the pet station. I didn't see how the clerk could stand it. He was a plump man whose gray jacket barely buttoned in front. When he saw me, he leaned against a counter so that his big belly strained his jacket even more. He made a big show of examining me. And when I opened my mouth to speak, he put up his hand. Uh-uh, don't say a word. 
I've got to study you for a while longer. This is all very scientific. Match the right pet with the right person and you've got two happy critters. I'd like an alligator, please, I said firmly. He was so surprised he popped a button. He ignored the wooden disc as it flew through the air. But, he protested, you're a hamster man if I ever saw one. I'll give you a good deal. I was usually a sucker for a bargain, but a hamster was, well, cute. I couldn't see the point in giving Bobby something he'd like. No, thanks. I came to get an alligator. The clerk made a loud buzzing sound like on the quiz shows when someone misses an answer. Eh, wrong, wrong, wrong. That's why a civilian should never be allowed to pick his own pet. An alligator is a terrible choice for you. You need warmth. You need cute. You need cuddly. I retrieved the button and handed it to him. It's not for me. It's for my brother, I explained. Irritated, he tapped the button on the glass top of the counter. You should have brought him along then. I can't observe him. How can I tell if his little friend should be feathered, furred, or fin? Who knew Bobby better than me? He needs an alligator, I insisted. Tell me about your brother, he suggested as he pocketed the button. I'd like an alligator, I repeated. If it has to be a reptile, how about a cute turtle? He stepped aside. There in a huge tank were the turtles mother had wanted me to buy. They were tiny things, only about three inches long. They almost completely covered a rock in the center of the tank. Layer after layer, they rose in an ever-changing, ever-squirming pyramid. Still others formed a green mosaic in the water. Just beyond them, was a table filled with plastic turtle homes like the one Mother had bought. I'll even throw in a nickname for it. From his back pocket, he took out a list. I have here a compendium of the hundred most popular pet names. Everyone is a surefire winner. No, I'd like an alligator, I persisted. He raised one eyebrow as he put away his list. Then he led me to another tank. There were three alligators, each about eight inches long from snout to tail tip. Baby alligators were something only, well, a mother alligator could love. They looked like green sticks, dark on top and yellow on the bottom. Their little legs dangled beneath them as they floated quietly. Their heads seemed to be mostly mouth, and their eyes stuck up like two little marbles moving about the surface. Even so, their teeth looked as fine and sharp as ivory needles. They're nothing but floating ap appetites. You really think your brother deserves one? He asked. Staring at their needle-sharp teeth, I hesitated. I don't know, he winked. I'll give you a good deal on a goldfish. Bobby would have bought a goldfish. They were harmless, just like Bobby. However, goldfish and hamsters would not develop Bobby's character at all. Nope, I said. I want an alligator. I crouched, studying the leathery creatures. In fact, I want that one. I pointed to the one drifting in the middle. When the clerk bent over to look, the front flaps of his jacket hung down. What's so special about that one? It's got the longest teeth, I said. See? The clerk looked across the tank at me. Son, I can see I've underestimated you considerably. You're not a hamster man. You're a skunk. Pure and simple. Chapter three. I could see the bus was packed before it even pulled up to the curb. When it opened its doors, I saw that people were even standing on the steps. I faced a solid wall of elbows and briefcases and bags. The other people behind me gave up. They turned away to wait for the next bus. However, I treated it like a football game. Holding my package tight against my stomach, I lowered my head and squeezed under the elbows. When a briefcase banged me, I shrugged it off like a tackler. As the door sighed shut, a man glared down at me. Watch it, Sonny. I pretended to ignore him, but I could feel his knee in my side. Still pulling the alligator's box against me, I thrust my bus ticket through the forest of legs. From the other side, I heard the driver's puncher click. Wriggling my arm back, I stowed my bus ticket in my pocket just as the bus gave a lurch. I fell against the man. Sorry, I muttered. The man gave me a sour look. Couldn't you wait for the next bus? When the bus pulled out into traffic, the alligator got excited. As it began to move from side to side, 
It shifted its weight around inside the box. The movement made the box hard to balance. Hurriedly, I clutched it in both arms so I wouldn't drop it. At the department store, a clerk had poked holes in the box so the alligator could breathe. It also made it easier to hear the alligator. Slither, slither, slither. When the bus jerked with a halt at a stoplight, I fell against the man again. Sorry, I mumbled a second time. I expected another snide remark, but the man only stared at the box. Just what have you got in there, Sonny? He asked. I got to my feet and tried to brace myself for the bus's jerky motion. It's an alligator, I said. The bus driver must have overheard me on the other side of the wall of people. Hey, you can't bring an alligator on board. I wasn't about to walk all the way to Chinatown with an alligator. It's small and it's safely boxed, I argued. Show me a sign that says I can't have it. Well, I say so, kid, the bus driver snapped. That's not good enough. My Uncle Curtis says that it, if, it, if it isn't posted in writing, it's not legal. And he's a lawyer, I added helpfully. He sues people. Okay, kid, the driver sighed. Just don't point that thing at me. When it's inside the box, it's hard to tell which end is which, I said to apologize. Suddenly, people got real edgy around me. We began pulling back, so I actually had room to spread my legs. At the next stop, the man and the others around me hurried off. At the time, I was too grateful to think it was odd. Instead, I climbed up the steps and joined the mob packed inside the bus itself. Slither, slither, slither. Shh, I said to the alligator. That only made the alligator thrash around angry. It might be small, but it was already very strong. Slither, slither, slither. As I struggled to hold the box, people were staring at me curiously when the alligator thumped its tail against the cardboard sides. People became nervous. It was funny how many of them got off at the next bus, at the next stop. As my bus roared away, they didn't leave. Instead, they milled around as if waiting for another bus. I spread my legs for better balance and gripped a railing. I tried to rest the box against my hip. However, when the alligator bounced off one side, I almost lost it altogether. In front of me was a man in a leather jacket. He shot up out of his seat and edged around me. Here, kid, he said. Stumbling, he lurched through the crowded bus to the rear doors. Standing beside me was an elderly lady. A bright blue bandana was wrapped tightly around her head. I smiled at her. Would you like the seat? At that moment, the alligator thrashed around and the box jerked up from my hip. Behind her glasses, the lady's eyes got very wide. Turning away from me, she said, excuse me. Wriggling, she followed the other man to the back of the bus. There was a woman on the other seat of the bench. She eyed me anxiously, and when I started to sit down, she said, wait a minute. She got up and slid through the crowd. I plopped down on the bench and slid over to the seat by the window. No one else sat down. Instead, everyone around me began to whisper and point at me. Setting the box on my lap, I held it with both hands. I was careful, though, not to cover up the air holes. I had to transfer two more times, once to a bus and once to a cable car. Each time, I had no trouble getting a seat, though it was crowded. By the time I got to Chinatown, I'd begun to fantasize. Was it me or was it the alligator? Maybe it was both. Any way you cut it, I didn't care. Chapter four. We lived in a three-story apartment on Clay Street, just to the east of Mason Street. A mattress sagged against one yellow wall of the hallway to our apartment house. I'd expected it to be hauled away each month, but each month it stayed, sagging a bit more against the wall. I took the steps two at a time. The metal buffers on the edges of the steps clicked musically under my shoes. If I climbed in a certain rhythm, the stairs made a kind of music. I could pretend I was a dancer. At the second landing, I could hear Mrs. Lee's Chinese opera. I only liked the fighting tunes. Sometimes, though, when I was with Mama and a love song came on, tears would come to her eyes. Hurriedly, she'd open her big black purse with a loud snap, and when I'd ask her why she was crying, she'd just wave her Kleenex. You need more Chinese school, she would say. Maybe my Chinese wasn't good enough. But Mama and Papa also used that excuse when they didn't want to explain something. On the third landing, I wrinkled my nose. Mr. Wong, our landlord, was boiling another of his herbal cures. From behind his door, I could hear him coughing. He'd had the cough all my life, 
and all my life he'd been going to the herbalist to get medicines. Each of them smelled worse than the last. Mama kept a can of pine scent by the doorway because of Mr. Wong. Anytime he boiled up one of his curses, she'd spray the pine scent along the bottom of the door. The scent was supposed to provide an invisible barrier against the stink, but it never did. I took a deep breath and covered the breathing holes of the box. Then I ran the last steps to our door. When I lifted my hand away to get my key, the alligator started slithering inside the box. Mr. Wong's medicine really seemed to upset it because it bounced from one side to the other. The weight kept shifting so violently that I almost dropped the box. Somehow, I managed to keep hold of it as I slipped through the door. Slamming it behind me, I set the box on the floor. Mother, I called out. She wasn't home. For her sake, I sprayed the pine scent along the door. Then I turned back to the box. Slither, slither, slither. Bobby, I shouted. The goody goody still hadn't come back. Kneeling, I undid the string and lifted the lid of the box. The alligator hadn't looked nearly so big in the department store. It hadn't looked so frisky either. It just seemed to surge up out of the box. I barely clapped the lid down in time. For a moment, I could feel its snout shoving at the cardboard. Then I was able to force the lid back on top of the box. As I held the lid down, I began to think of all the questions I should have asked the department store clerk. Can alligators bite through cardboard lids? Do alligators get mad? How big do they grow? Do they hold grudges? Thoughts like these raced through my mind as I tried to keep the alligator from escaping. When it finally subsided, I didn't dare lift my hands. As I knelt there, another question came to me. How do I wrap it? I might still have been sitting there if Mama and Bobby hadn't finally come home. Oh, that Mr. Wong, Mama said. Oh, don't breathe, Bobby. Mother had probably stopped by Father's fish shop to pick up, pick up some shrimp for tonight. It would be like Bobby to leave the fish shop and help her with her packages. I heard her key fumble at the door. It's not locked, she said in surprise and turned the doorknob. The smell of Mr. Wong's medicine blew heavily into the apartment. Mama stared down at me, her key still in her hand. Teddy, what are you doing there? The stench of the herbal cure roused the alligator once again. Something thumped against the lid, and I sat back startled. Watch out! The lid bobbed up and down under more blows. What's that? Bobby asked. He set down his shopping bags as the lid finally got knocked the jar. Run! I shouted as a thin green tail waved in the air. With the ignorance of youth, Bobby simply lifted the lid up. It's an alligator! He cried in delight. I was going to make up for my crime by throwing myself between Bobby and the alligator. However, the alligator merely poked its snout out of the box. Bobby stared down at it. Wow, that's neat, neat, neat old. Mama had finally found her voice. Whose alligator is that? I think she was hoping that I was only alligator sitting for someone else. I didn't dare look up at her as I confessed. It's Bobby's, I added. I bought it as a special birthday present. You did? Bobby's face lit up. This is the neatest present anyone's ever given me. I stared at him dumbly. You want it? Of course. He looked down almost warmly. I always wanted a pet. It's an alligator, Mother said. It's just like the ones in the Academy of Sciences, he explained. I took the lid from Bobby's hands. I'll take it back and get you something nice. I'd seen a special sale on cotton socks while I'd been at the department store. But I like it, he began to rhapsodize. Anyone can have a dog or a cat, but an alligator is something else. I even want to go to Florida to study them when I grow up. I always thought they were neat lying in the water at the academy. They look just like logs until you get too close, then snap. He slapped his palms together in illustration. I saw monster movies for the same reasons and had a lot more fun and a lot less trouble. But you hate violence. When a Western or a war movie comes on the TV, you always leave the room. One time you even made me turn off a cartoon. He shrugged. This is different. It's, it's natural. That's the point, I argued. Movie violence is just fake. The blood's just carol syrup and red dye. I nodded to the alligator. These guys really do rip off arms. I added in case mother was around. When they're bigger.
but that's real. Movies are somehow, he hunted for the right words, more than real. If an alligator gets a chicken, it happens in our world. In those war movies, I'm in someone else's world. I didn't know my little brother had it in him. Maybe sweet little Bobby wasn't so sweet after all. Thanks a lot, Teddy. Bobby leaned over the box to pat my arm. Watch it. I shoved him back before the alligator could gut him. He misunderstood my rescue attempt. Are you angry at me? I'm sorry I ruined your surprise. I couldn't stand it. Now he was apologizing. Forget it, I snapped. Suddenly he grinned from ear to ear. I think I'll call him Teddy. He said it as if that were the only name for an alligator. I'm honored, I said and added, I think. Okay, I'm going to stop there. And I'll see you hopefully tomorrow. Bye.